Hey folks, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today I've come on to do something that I hope will be a little bit of fun and originally was just going to be something I was coming on to do anyway. But I suppose I've made it into a hashtag just in case. So as you can see, I've called it Oracles with Attitude. This is a playful idea that came to me several years ago and I just never got around to it on Instagram so I decided it would be good YouTube content and really it was based on those really great memes. It's got like tarot and oracle or tarot oracle and runes and it usually has tarot set up as the kind of truth bringer, dangerous, sassy, gut punch message and then the oracle part of the memes kind of like the gentle equivalent of a kiss on the forehead you know or a nice hug it's all very affirmative and sweet i actually think those memes are very very funny i'm here for them they make me laugh this isn't a hate message i really enjoy decks that i would coin as very soulfully short and sweet affirmative type decks ones that many of us might call a hug deck or a pick me up i'm not going to repeat that like i said that's that's where i stand this is just about something else and the reason that i guess it sparked it is because when i was a kid most oracles kind of felt that way that i came into contact with aside from my medicine cards those memes to me feel really reflective of 90s decks in the majority which is why I think it's very funny because even some of the edgier looking ones had that certain kind of affirmative vibe. Not all of them. This is likely super specific to the people I had around me, the decks that they had, the places that I was taking where decks were sold, all of that stuff. But it did feel like more of a thing. Whereas adult me, especially into my 30s, have found myself in oracle decks that have a lot of attitudes and expressions. So really, I just wanted to make a fun video that wasn't endless or exhaustive. I chose a number for mine because originally it wasn't a tag. <laughs> and that's what we do, right? I also didn't want to film like an entire collection video just a few that give me a different kind of attitude, talk a little bit about why and what I enjoy about them in practice. And if people jump in, then we won't necessarily all share the same, say the same thing. This isn't then an hour long and people who only have one deck that they want to talk about aren't left out. So that's the principle of the tag. So getting onto the term attitude, just because otherwise it, it may get misinterpreted, when I say attitude, I'm really playing with the word a little loosely, which is not something I always do with language. Attitudes can be many things, including having a comforting approach. So the word attitude to me often feels open to direction based on like the surrounding descriptions or context. So in this instance, I suppose I will define it a little further based on what I've said already. For me, I'm referencing things such as straight talking oracles, a deck with a very particular attitude, like it's perhaps often a sassy reader that has a bit of an edge to it. It could be something that's a little bit more blunt or frank, or perhaps it's a bit of a button pusher instead of one that just tends towards those quick uplifting messages. It's not to say that these aren't compassionate or that gentle decks aren't truthful. I feel like these can exist in both, so there are nuances. It may even be that it's a deck that lacks some tact, which I've definitely got one of. That's as much collective description as I'm up for, because they all vary. I just really chose a catchy word so that if you decided this is tag worthy and it's something that you wanted to talk about as well, I can find you. You're welcome to add your own nuances. Sometimes the aesthetics may be a part of why and other times not at all. It's just the way that it reads or the energy of the deck. For me, these are personalizations of the deck based on my experience with them in practice and lots of it. None are anywhere near new. 
and because I see them through more of an animistic lens than I once did, which is a shift in my practice over time, these aren't necessarily the way that they would read for anyone else, as this is the way that I collaborate with their energy and interpret them, which even if I didn't see them that way, the same deck can read differently for hundreds of different people. So yeah. Selecting from my list was a challenge, however, as I have quite a few more decks that I could have put into this, but I decided to go for variety and here are my five. Let's go for something that looks way cuter than it reads in my humble opinion and that is the Le Vampire Oracle and this is by Lucy Cavendish and the artwork is by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. To be honest it kind of gives me these kind of wholesome early noughties vibes despite somehow not being published until 2014. At least that's what my copy says but this witchy old school mood visually that it has about it it definitely has that aesthetic vibe but then just way way more sass <laughs> i feel like there's more reflections of my craft and practice in this just in little ways you've got things like death riots more of the energies that are sometimes suppressed as well. Well, when I say to suppressed, not really discussed necessarily in some societies. I do understand why people get this kind of teen vibe from a selection of these decks. And I don't mean that I think these are teens. This is very much just Jasmine's art style, which I love. I love the Big Eyed Girls. But I'm just saying like, I, I understand where people are coming from, but I also feel like a lot of the experiences that are explored in this deck don't really get settled in that era, in time, you know. There are also things that feel like very natural experiences to me just throughout our age timeline. I don't really work with the guidebook very often, so I'm speaking more to my experience with the cards. And with them, I get a, a really direct, to the point, no airs and graces message. And to be honest, I kind of feel like vampires often, if not always, have been used to represent the more repressed and just less collectively understood or welcomed facets of humanity in the world so that we can sort of look at them in play from afar it sort of gives us that distance somehow like it makes it easier but really they're just mirroring facets of us albeit perhaps to extremes and i honestly i find it sometimes to also be closer to what folks might call tough love it doesn't sour life it's more of a it it is what it is. Life comes with a lot of challenges and this deck, you know, tries to present them in a, in a delightfully gorgeous capacity, in my opinion, that just works with its theming really well. So I think that's why it just, I don't know, maybe, I just get a sense that sometimes people will think this is kind of a cliche deck. And it's really not for me. I love vampires anyway. And over time, I'll be honest, I've become fond of all depictions of them from the more kind of 90s romantic fantasy covers like Ian Daniels' Tarot one. Perhaps this is somewhere nearer that. And then you've got like the, the darkest of the dark stories, you know, the really bone chilling kind. I really feel like there's a space for all of it. This is a far cuter face with a, a pretty straightforward approach in my experience. But yeah, I've nearly gone for all of the cards, so that's enough on this one. Next is my Compendium of Constellations. I actually have both editions, but this is the first one that I had. This is the version that I'm very bonded with. So if you're wondering, that's the difference it makes to me. So Compendium is my loving but brash friend is the quickest way to describe it if 
if I come to this hoping to experience some kind of soothing and that's genuinely my intent, I swiftly came to realise that then I'm not working with the spirit of the deck very much, which is, I suppose, a nod to how I view working with decks and how that's changed over time. I do feel that it has a lot still to do with how I choose to read a deck, you know, how I engage with the artwork, how it makes me feel, all of that stuff. My relationship with them is also about the energy that I feel like I'm picking up, you know, the, the spirit of it and what I get from being in this kind of collaborative experience with them. And some of my decks feel like they are very clear about what kind of offerings they will give over and over despite my being very willing open and able to have varying approaches and this is just one of those it's not that there aren't some really beautiful <laughs> i was gonna say sweet terms hate is definitely not one of them but there are some really lovely terms on these cards fertility being one of them you know adapt very useful enhance it's not that they're not there this just isn't a hug deck. <laughs> it's very far from it. Like when I think of this deck, I'll be honest, do you know the song by Florence and the Machine called Kiss With A Fist? That's kind of what I hear, which I really want to put forward that I mean this more in the spirit of things. Perhaps if we really dive into the lyrics of that song, uh, they have a far heavier connotation than anywhere near what I experienced with this deck. So I just want to make that clear. It's more like playfully speaking, it has kind of that vibe. It's almost like the essence is, I'll help you get up off the floor, but I am going to laugh at your ass for falling over because, you know, we had the chat. I gave you the support that you asked for so that this wouldn't happen. It kind of feels like you ignored it and well, here we have it. And I'm not always referencing working with it and ignoring it. I'm just saying again, that's just, just the energy that I get from this. It's just very hard to explain it. I get a real lot from my readings that I do with this deck. And the thing is, I quite like blunt. Like we do blunt a lot in my immediate family, especially my stepmom and I. Or even just straightforward, you know, defence is down, let's hear what needs to be said. That kind of thing. No ill intent, just speaking. Just open communication, but getting to the point. None of this beating around the bush. And that's what I feel like this does really, really well. And perhaps that is just a singular keyword as well. But like I said, it's definitely the energy of the deck as well as the keyword choices. It rarely ever gives me a reading where it's like all of the positives. And I feel like that's great because what it does so well is being the voice of varying ends of the spectrum. It feels like it's uh, quite a realist in my experience with it. So that's one of the things I come to it for because I enjoy that. Recently, I got a reading, which here it is. I'm so glad that I left them out. So this was my reading that I did sometime last week. And essentially the way that I read this is, okay, you want more freedom. Awesome, that's nice. Then stop fucking conforming drop any layers of vanity that are related to conforming and that's how you get your freedom it's quick it's to the point so yeah this is this is my my brash sharpshooter blunt talking friend i don't have the box for this one i'm quite certain it doesn't need much of an introduction the fairy's oracle is very very well known and has about every attitude under the sun which is why i feel like it was a good one to stretch the idea of attitude so while there are a handful of cards that fill me with a sense of peace and comfort and a hug when i really need one they are so well mixed in with everything from finger pointing and sass to the heaviness of having 
some emotions and some experiences and really just all that's in between. Also, this deck is very much the embodiment of the Fae for me, and I welcome those I work with to utilise the voice of this deck too, which is a whole thing in and of itself. I'm not going to discuss that now, but I have felt the cheekiness of being misled just to see if I have my wits about me. I've had reminders of mortality, deception and really been asked and invited to look in the mirror at my own shit in equal amounts of anything else that I get from this deck so it really is that mix and I suppose if I had to gather them as a collective I do tend to coin it as kind of cheeky but honestly, that even feels a little bit reductive because the energies are just so vast in comparison to each other. I think some of the groupings that they do in this deck show some aspects of the personality well. Like the singers generally hold some familiar energies between them for me. But then other groupings have got, again, just such a... Just such a mix that there's too many there's too many dissimilarities. And it gives me that reminder, like humans, we can't all just lump us together and expect a kind of concise universal personality. So I guess a good way to describe this one is being far more or rather I am far more unsure of what I'm going to get and whom. I know I will always work with whoever comes forward and will converse and engage, but I don't have anywhere as much of an inkling prior to pull in as I would with some of my more energetically uniform decks. I feel like the fairies deck was one that demanded a lot of my time to gain that kind of familiarity as well and connection, whereas some others is almost out of the box and it isn't necessarily about ease of use because interesting and perhaps surprisingly enough I bonded with this very quickly based on Brian Froud's exercise in the beginning of the book it just it really clicked something for me but the the feeling of having a familiarity in our working relationship in our practice that took far longer than other decks that I have. And to be honest, if I haven't used it for a while as well, sometimes it feels like it needs a little bit of attention again. And I will just hang out with the deck and go through it, do ritual offerings, that kind of thing. So yeah, this is full of all of the attitudes, if that makes sense. It's definitely one that keeps me on my toes. I'll show you the box first because the cards are already out because I was using them. <laughs> this is the Iris Oracle. So moving into a completely different nuance. And this for me holds an interesting space between sort of a straight talker with a kind of raw innocence. I will explain. It's not that it's naive, although... The artwork is quite gentle and it has that free and whimsical air to it. But there's also this vibe of... It reminds me when a kid draws exactly what they feel, completely uninhibited by the fact that an adult might not share this information with others or they may soften the message. I also want to add that I don't feel that the art in this is childlike in quality. It's more the expression of it feels very free, if that makes sense. I actually really love the art. It feels like the emotions and the space in time were put onto the cards. And I've often said many times before that when a creator was particularly going through a time and of change and challenge maybe grief something like that and part of that process was a deck creation or it was channeled into that I definitely feel like that's something that I tend to pick up on in my decks and I tend to 
find out later that that's how the deck was made. It's not something that I go in knowing. So I definitely pick up on that. I rarely say something's underrated. And the reason being is, firstly, it's just so damn subjective. And secondly, I have very little interest in how many other people do or don't own something that I have, other than sheer curiosity. Like, I like hearing about it, but it's not a big deal. But based on commentary about the art when this came out, I feel like this is an underrated deck. This, to me, is another tough love one again. Not in the crappy, toxic discussion of tough love, though. Not tough love as a way to bully people into getting on with shit and suppressing their emotions or whatever. I mean, really, I suppose the difficulty of... I hate to put it like this, but like doing the work. I don't like that term. I can't think of anything else at the moment. But whatever the work means to the individual, facing the emotions, having the difficult chat because it's frankly better than pretending and sitting on issues as they fester. It's that kind of vibe that I get from this. I have had some real aha moments with this one. I actually used to have a regular client who adored this deck for very similar reasons. You know, people don't seem to be pissed when they get the tough message from this or when they've cried or it's brought up something else challenging. But it really seems to be in that space where people, including myself, feel relieved to get it out there. And it's a welcome invitation to be with this in a safe, open space. I feel like it, it tries to encourage us to hold that type of a space. I mean, some of that, I suppose, is about the space that I hold in the sessions that I do as well. But I definitely feel that this complements that energy. So we work really well together because of this. I don't think not saying the difficult thing to someone because they might get upset in the short term is often the way to go. There are exceptions and times and places for those discussions, of course. That's like anything, but yeah, I think this is, it very much gives me like a, it's time to say or process or face this. I actually did a review of this deck, what feels like forever ago. So I'm not sure if I did this aspect of it justice or not, but yeah, I am, I am a long time fan because of the way that this one lands. It just feels very significant and timely as well. The freedom of the ideals of being a child. And I mean the ideals because often they don't last or some children aren't afforded much of that at all, as we know. But like in an ideal world, those freedoms and some of that raw expression meets kind of the wisdom of an elder it's a really strange and funny mashup that i get from this but there you have it and just to add something very fun at the end the nonsensical ramblings of the arcane bullshit oracle if you do not like crude imagery finish this video now <laughs> so the arcane bullshit has absolutely zero tact. <laughs> the attitude is very much get over yourself. It feels like it's saying when all the seriousness is done, the reclamation of power and healing and all of that good stuff in practice is aside, there really also needs to be the space to remember that hey, we're just another animal temporarily in a physical vessel on a planet far older and more important than us, pretending to know more about being here than we actually do. <laughs> Future not found. Precisely. <laughs> and I mean this in a loving way, like in jest. But of course, things have as much meaning as we allow them in some senses, because so much in life is subjective. As we know, very little is 
truly objective. And that's what I mean by it. It's like Evan, the creator's intention for this deck, I feel almost certain in saying that it was to share his humour and art, but also to kind of poke fun at the utter seriousness that can and does occur in occult circles. Bearing in mind as well that seriousness doesn't equal respect, despite the two often being conflated with each other. And we all know that I can be very serious. So it's not anti, I'm not anti that just because I feel like sometimes it's not the way. I have actually had some really meaningful readings from this deck with my Brady Tarot. I've shared about my love of reading those two together. I really enjoy it actually, but it still has zero tact. It doesn't matter. It's not even trying to help me access the meaning. I'll be honest, like it rather, it kind of sits there and chills out, very uninterested as to whether I come to some kind of conclusion or not. And that's very funny to me. I have a lot of fun with this. I read it seriously. I read it in really silly ways. I have a very varied approach with this. So completely different to how I would come to Compendium of Constellations because I feel like 99% of the time we're doing a very particular type of collaboration together. Whereas this, all bets are off. The deck's energy doesn't change. It's just more about the versatility of how I can come to it and my relationship with it. Again, our relationship is very varied. So there you have it. They are my five oracles with attitude. Like I said, I have quite a few. It's just something fun. It's really not meant to be a thing. Technically, the huggiest deck in the world has that attitude. It has an uplifting, affirmative attitude. Like I say, it was more just years ago when I was young. It was the oracles were affirmative and they were loving and... They were like the nice, softer part of cards and doing readings, aside from my medicine cards, which kind of just sat in this weird other space. So as I got older and I started to see all of these other attitudes arise in deck world, I dug the variety and I felt like then I appreciate the hug decks more as well. They have a space because they're not my only option. If you are going to join in by any small chance, then... Ping me below in the comment, tag me in the video, I don't know, let me know that it's out there. I'll keep an eye on the hashtag from time to time. Otherwise, let me know what you thought of how I experienced these decks because it's always really intriguing if you own the deck and you're like, well, it does not read like that for me at all because that just absolutely fascinates me. Or if it does, then again, it's kind of fun to hear that that's a shared experience. I will otherwise let you all be and I'll see you again soon. Bye.